Hi, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ. In this lesson, how to practice your striking defense solo. All right, so in this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to know to be able to practice your striking defensive techniques and strategies solo, without a partner. Specifically, we're gonna look at the five layers of striking defense, which are number one, distance management, so you can avoid the strikes in the first place. Number two, head movements, either proactive or reactive head movements, so you can then counter strike. Number three is gonna be deviation, specifically for strikes coming down the middle, punches, deviating punches, deviating punches to the body, deviating kicks. We're gonna look how to get those out of the way so you don't get hit. Number four is gonna be blocks, so specifically long range and short range. So blocking strikes coming from the outside, either punches or kicks. And you can also block short here and down the middle here, blocking using a turtle block to the face or to the body. And number five, which is arguably the most important aspect of striking defense, will be to learn to take a hit. You can be kicked on the leg here or here, to the body, or even to the face, hiding your chin and blocking with your head. That's your last line of striking defense. In all those cases, we're also gonna see how to connect our defensive techniques and strategies with an immediate offense, because that's a basic principle of striking. You never wanna just stay there and be a sitting duck. You always wanna fire back with an offense of your own. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, a common misconception is that you absolutely need a partner to practice your striking defense. And don't get me wrong, there's value to practicing with a partner, specifically if it's someone you trust and they're able to control the power and the speed of their strikes, safety first. That being said, if you don't have the luxury of having a partner with you, you can still go a long way by practicing these movements and these strategies on your own if you have proper imagination. So, like we said, the first layer of striking defense will be distance management. And for that, you must always be in a proper fighting stance. So, check it out in the uh, cards above if you have not already, the fighting stance video. We go into a lot of detail on how to be always in a proper fighting stance. But, long story short, if you want to skip it, always in a fighting stance, feet wide, knees bent, chin down. That's what you should always be looking for at all times. Your feet can be staggered, they can be bladed, but you always want to fit feet wide, knees bent, chin down. So you're always minimizing the openings and your guard is up. There's a variety of guards you can employ. We're gonna cover that, but essentially always in the fighting stance. And for distance management, you want to be very wary of when the person can touch you or not. So that's gonna be useful to deal with a partner so you can see where their strikes reach you. But in terms of your reaction, it's just being quick to move away. So you always want to have kind of a fighting sway going on and you want to be quick on your feet, specifically to retract or to go to the side or to pivot at an angle. So going sideways here, moving back. So you can imagine the person striking, especially if you have practiced with a partner before, you can imagine what they're doing. Okay, front kick, get it out of the way. Here, punch it. Oh, round kick, get the leg out of the way. Here, move back quickly. A little trick about moving back quickly, you can throw your arms back here and that creates backwards momentum, which allows you to disengage quickly. Now, regardless of your technique you're doing to move back, you also want to take the habit of firing back with something. So for each one of those ranges and these strategies for striking defense, we're always going to follow up with an offense of our own. So we're here, moving back, moving back, we'll counter with a strike. Moving back, moving back, counter with a strike. Here and follow up. Boom, and disengage. So getting out of the way, either moving back and countering, or countering and then moving out of the way right after. So distance management is our first striking defensive strategy because it's always best to just not deal with the person's strikes at all. If you wanna see this done at the highest level, study fights by Demetrius Johnson. He's a master at doing this. The next striking defensive strategy will be your head movements. So again, we covered this in a lot of detail in our fighting stance video, but essentially, moving your head out of the way, you're gonna be going from side to side, you're gonna be going from front to back, and high to low. And if you think about it, this delimits a cube. So you have the lines between your feet here, front and back, and side to side. These are the limits of where you can move your head. So you don't wanna move your head outside of your base, because then you're compromising your stability, and you're taking away your ability to move. So if you go here, that would be too far. Here, that would be too far. 
because the head is further than the foot. Now this foot is unweighted, I can't use it to move. You want to keep your head in between your feet. You want to keep your chin down, feet wide, knees bent, chin down. Those are the parameters of the fighting stance. So typically, when a punch comes down the middle, we can slip it here. So I'm going forward, I'm going sideways, and I'm going down at the same time. So it draws a diagonal this way, here, keeping my shoulder up next to my chin. And another punch comes here. Typically, I always want to slip towards the person's back. So here, I'll be going this way. Here, I'll be going this way. Here. Slip in, slip out. So I'm moving my head forward and down and to the side. You don't need to move that much. If the punch is coming here, I just need to move my head this much. So the punch just grazes my ear. Okay, so that's the slip in, slip out. Lean back is a very important one as well. So here, I wanna move my head at furthest, equal my back foot. If I wanna go further, I need to step into it. So my head remains above my base. When you do so, you want to bring your lead shoulder to your chin and your back hand to your chin and this hand is going to be doing a counterweight here. So you're protecting your chin. You never want to move your head back with your chin up in the air. You're a vulnerable target in this case. So tuck your chin as you move back here and then come right back. This is a good drill as well to practice chaining with your counters. Lean back, boom, counter with a cross. You can also do a modified fighting twist, lean back and come back with a power jab. We saw this in a lot of detail in our head movements and counters video with a partner. So here, slip in. When you slip, you can slip either simultaneous counter here or here, or counter right after, here or here. Or you can do both, simultaneous followed by right after. So those are the parameters of head movements and counters. You can strike while you're moving your head, or you can strike right after. And the other one is ducking under or bobbing, right? And weaving here. So you can go under and in this case, you have an opportunity to attack the body. And when you come up, you have an opportunity to attack the face. So here, body, face. Same thing, I would recommend you practice these with both legs in front. Here, slip in, counter, slip out, counter, right after, duck under, body, face, duck under, body, face, Lean back, counter. All right, so those are your head movements. And when you're comfortable with those, you should be able to do constant head movements, so preemptive head movements. So imagine the person striking you, and you always wanna be moving your head so that it's harder for them to know where to strike. And from there, you pepper in strikes of your own. Here, head movements, keeping always. Feet wide, knees bent, chin down, and countering and moving your head. Next, striking defense strategy will be deviations. So, and you can do, use these in conjunction, obviously. We're gonna do a demonstration with everything blended together towards the end. But essentially, when a strike comes down the middle, you can deviate it. And the common mistake that people do a lot, beginners, is they deviate it too much. They do an they exaggerate the movement here, which creates another opening here. A person can follow up with a hook over here. Or here, same thing. You wanna do a small movement. So the strike comes here, boom. You just tap it out of the way so it doesn't hit your chin. Here, same thing, boom, tap, tap. If it's a front kick or a side kick, you can also deviate it with your elbow. Same thing for an uppercut. Coming here, boom, deviate with your elbow. Small deviation for things coming down the center line. If it's a front push kick here, you can also, also deviate it with your elbow. Depending on which leg it is, typically you want to expose the partner's back. So if it's their leg here and their back is here, I want to push it this way. If it's the other leg coming here, I want to push it this way. And in both cases, I have the opportunity to counter. So deviate, counter, deviate, counter. Deviate here, counter with the same hand. Deviate, counter with the other hand. Deviate, counter with the same hand. Deviate, counter with this, the other hand. You can mix and match, okay? So deviations. Another option for a front push kick is use this leg to deviate it this way. So the strike comes, boom, deviate. And again, step into it, counter. So you always wanna drill the habit of countering after your defensive movements. Next up, after deviations, is blocks. So again, this will be higher impact on your body. If you have the choice, you wanna be out of there because you don't wanna deal with the power of the person striking you, especially if they're bigger and stronger than you. That being said, maybe we don't have time to get out of the way and we need to block. So here, for a hook, you can block on the outside like this. Again, shoulder down, uh, chin down, shoulder up, and you're blocking here or here. In both cases, we're gonna counter right after. Block, counter. We can block and counter simultaneously. Here or here. 
If it's a kick that comes to the leg or to the body, we can block it with the leg over here. Boom. Connecting our elbow to our knee. Here, block, and then again, counter or block and counter with a kick of our own. So you should definitely be comfortable with the basic kicks and punches. Check out those videos in the description and cards above to make sure you're strong on your basic striking arsenal. Putting defense and offense together then will be your next step. So here, blocking on the outside, counter, blocking, countering, blocking here. Now sometimes it's not in our best interest to be reaching out to block those strikes. Maybe we wanna block tighter. This will minimize the openings, especially when we start being overwhelmed with strikes coming in. So using what we call the turtle block, here, block, block, and again, block and counter, block, counter, or block, counter right after, block, counter right after. Here, if it comes to the body, keeping the fist glued to the cheekbones and pinching the elbows down to the body over here without exposing the face. Here, blocking to the body, and then counter of our choice. If it comes to the side here, elbow tight to the ribs, tip of the elbow to the hip bone, and face glued to the fist. Here, boom, blocking and then countering. Blocking, countering, We're blocking, countering simultaneous. Now, the last, so this is blocking, long range and short range. The last layer of striking defense is arguably the most important, and we're gonna demonstrate that with a partner later on, but you can do this on your own as well, is being able to take a hit. So that's layer number five. This could happen different ways. Maybe the person gives you a kick on your leg, and you can practice this with impact yourself as well. Just hit yourself in the leg. Use the heel of your palm and hit yourself in the leg. Now, if you don't do anything, it'll be uncomfortable. Your leg kind of buckles in. But if you do the proper reaction, which would be to turn your knee to the outside and put a little bit of weight on your leg, you'll feel this impact will be nullified by the reaction of your leg. So here, boom, strike, and then squat down and knee to the outside, here. And practice hitting yourself as hard as you can handle on the leg. If you have a partner, ask them to start slow and then gradually increase the power of their strike. But again, don't create damage, safety first. The same is true for the inside, here. So if you hit the very inside of your leg, that could be uncomfortable. So when you have a hit coming in, you'll just kind of pivot your foot here and you'll block with the top of your thigh, which is a lot better than the side of your leg. And you obviously want to be doing that with both legs. Here, going in and inside, here, pivoting. Now if you have the choice, it's always better to check the kick on the outside here. But sometimes you don't react in time and you're going to be forced to eat the kick. The next aspect is having uh, strikes thrown at you at the body, and again, you can do this on your own. The most vulnerable part of your body will be your plexus here, where your rib cage meets your abdominal region. So right below the, blood, the breastplate here, that little soft spot in the uh, plexus. So you wanna flex your abs, breathe out. You don't wanna have a lot of air in your lungs, and you wanna be breathing out when the strike comes. Again, using the heel of your palm, hit yourself, you can hit anywhere here on the ribs, but I find the soft spot and the one that takes the most training is the plexus right here. Okay, so hit yourself here, and again, if you have the luxury of having a partner practice that with you, start slow and gradually increase. Flex the abs and breathe out when you get hit. Now, arguably the most important aspect of last line of resistance is being able to deal with the head strikes. Now, the most vulnerable part of your upper body is definitely your chin. Why? Because it acts as a lever on your skull, and if it's hit in the right angle, hook here, or uppercut here, or even sometimes a straight punch coming from the side, it can rattle your brain inside your skull, and that what, that's what creates knockouts. So your brain kind of hits the, per, the sides of your skull, and that uh, makes you lose consciousness. So you want to protect your chin at all times. That's why we say in the fighting stance, chin down at all times. And again, having a good base, feet wide, knees bent, and chin down. So if you have your chin down, it's gonna be harder to reach. Maybe the strikes hit the shoulder, they hit here, but your chin is braced on both sides here, so you can't really move your head that much. Somebody that's strong enough, if they hit your skull, even uh, especially with a kick, that can also create a concussion. But chin down here, and then when you wanna train yourself that if all else fails and we're not able to get out of the way, we're not able to do our head movements, we're not able to deviate or block long range, if the strike comes in and even maybe our hands are busy with something else, we're in the clinch or something and there's a strike coming, you wanna hide your chin and block with your head. So 
So the strike that comes here would be hitting your chin, but at the last moment you tip your chin in and it's the forehead that blocks. And your forehead is a very strong bone. It's made to protect your, your brain. So you can rely on that for some level of protection. Obviously it's not pleasant to get hit on the head, but it's a lot better than being hit on the chin. So if the strike comes here, boom, head down and you block it with your forehead. Same thing here, strike comes to the nose or to the chin, tip your head down and it's like you're headbutting the strike. For added effectiveness, also be moving towards the strike here. So it's like you're actually headbutting the strike. Your head is going towards the strike in any direction. So that's bare bones, last line of defense when you don't have your hands. But if you do have your hands, this will help you improve your turtle blocks as well. So if you have your hands in guard, a common mistake for beginners is to just do this, but then their head is not aligned with the impact. So that creates kind of a tweak in the neck and you can still get messed up with that. So if you tip your head here towards the strike and you have your arm as an extra layer of protection, you're gonna be pretty well off blocking those strikes. Either forward, sideways, or sideways, tipping your head always towards the strike. And you don't have your hands here. So you can use your hands to hit yourself, again, not too hard, and really feel what it feels like to block a strike with your head. You need to be comfortable with that, and you need to have that as a last resort. So going towards the strike, and a little bit more advanced tip as well, when you're braced correctly for impact, you can also absorb the strike as well. So I'm braced for impact, but I'm kind of moving away from the strike at the same time. So you can practice hitting yourself and moving away from it at the same time. Doesn't mean you expose your chin, but you're gonna be moving with the strike so that you minimize, that's called rolling with the punches. A little bit more advanced strategy for you guys. And again, no matter the defensive technique or strategy that you're employing, you always wanna train yourself to answer back with a counter. So block, counter, block, counter. And you're gonna always block, counter, block, counter. So always defense and offense. They really go together. If you just defend, sooner or later, the opponent is gonna have the upper hand on you. Unless you're way better than them, and that takes a lot of practice. So before we wrap this up, quick recap, putting everything together, distance management and countering, head movements and countering, deviations and counter, blocks and counter, blocks and counter, close range, blocks, blocks and counter, boom, and eating a hit, boom, here, hit and counter. Hit and counter, and counter, head, counter, head, counter, and everything together. Defense, head movements, offense, moving out of the way, head movements, preemptive, lean back, block, counter, getting out, deviate, counter, long range block, counter, boom, combo. Getting hit, counter. Getting hit, counter. Getting hit, counter with the other hand. Getting hit on the head, boom, counter. Counter, counter. So there you have it guys. Hope you found this video interesting and hope you can keep on practicing your striking defense even if you don't have the luxury of having a partner all the time. Now this is uh, also true for your wrestling and your grappling by the way. Uh, people are used to seeing like shadow boxing, right? Mostly for offense, but you don't see as much striking defense and you don't see as much people practicing your, their wrestling. So shadow wrestling as well and defense and grappling too, being on the ground, shooting your triangles, going for your sweeps, going for your guard passes and so on. So you definitely want to practice all the ranges of hand-to-hand -hand combat, and that's what we specialize in here at Effective Martial Arts. Uh, so we have an answer for all the aspects of MMA. Basically, we created the first belt system for MMA. So once again, if you have not already, subscribe to our channel right now because we are really excited about all the powerful content we've got coming your way, and we are still just getting started. Now also, an important consideration when you do have a partner to practice with is the importance of control. So when you're practicing with a partner, you won't have the ability to stop your strikes at the surface with perfect control, whether that be punches or kicks. Where from there, you can gradually increase the strength and percentage 
of your power, depending on your partner's ability to deal with those techniques. So you never want to overwhelm your partner, but you don't want them to be bored either. So you want to keep them kind of in a sweet spot where maybe 80% of their defensive techniques or strategies are successful and only maybe 20% of the strikes actually land. But those strikes that land, make sure you're not creating damage because that's just not smart. If you're hurting yourself when you're practicing, you won't be able to practice for a long time. So you're hindering your progress long term. So train smart uh, and always safety first, especially when you're doing with a partner. And lastly, before we wrap this up, comment below, have you ever practiced your striking defense on your own or is this a new concept to you? And after the, watching this video, will you or have you practiced your striking defense? Let us know in the comments below. Till next time, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ in Point Claire, West Island, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Thank you very much for watching. Practice well.